Best British accent. Good day hi, and welcome. I hope you're having a great day with some tea and crumpets. No spam. I, I know British people don't really talk like that. Oh, chappy. Today we have Brexit, and it is a glorious Brexit day for after breakfast. I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So now that I've lost every British subscriber, I have. Uh, <laughs> okay, Brexit. Yeah. So okay, I'll be first to say, I was wrong. I, I mean, I was like, well, scarily on some details I was dead on, but uh, but uh, yeah, I was wrong. They got to stay. So now, I'm not going to say this is a winning victory for democracy in the sense of, yes, you actually do get a vote. Because you don't know. They could be just letting it go. Yes, there is going to be hard times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want you to think about it this way. The reset button has just been pressed globally. Yes, globally. This is going to have... It, uh, next to uh, waking up to all the markets crashing, and uh, it's been a hell of a week for me. I've been in town all week. I'm going to be in town till Sunday. Today's the 24th, the day after the Brexit. Uh, so markets crashing. That, that's short term. Like that's going to bounce back. So that's nothing. But yes, there will be a recession. I guarantee that. But w what we're going to talk about here is when the people have spoken. Okay, that's democracy. 50% plus one. Uh, you know, uh, and you got. Look how close I called it, though. Just in the reverse. Uh, 51, 48, uh, it was like 48.1 in favor of staying and 51.9 in favor, almost 52%. But I, I said 48, 51, but I thought it was going to be the other way around, that they would be staying, just to give people a kick in the nuts. Uh, but it didn't work out that way. Um, now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's going to be painful no matter which way you go. It's going to be more painful for other countries. And believe it or not, Brexit almost guarantees war in Germany. Not between Britain and uh, in, uh, the UK, but between Germans and the rest of the EU. Why? Because uh, now the big player... I mean, this is a hell of a domino falling here. A lot of people like the global implications. We're not going to see it for months yet, maybe even years. But it is a step in the right direction. But it's going to be a very painful step no matter which way you go. Like I said, we're in an insolvent situation globally everywhere from... Even on the CBC, they were almost speaking in half truths. They're like, well, it's a populist movement. It's not just because people are, uh, you know, racist and bigot or whatever. No, they actually want sovereignty back to their country. So Brexit made sense. And they're saying that. And I couldn't believe it actually hearing this on the news where the CBC is saying, well, uh, <coughs> you know, the, the, the politicians are, and, and the central planners are completely out of touch with what the people want. And it's true, they are. So with that it's it's you know again if this is truly the people speaking you never know it could be hijacking this thing for other reasons but obviously there's going to be a ton of layoffs but if you look at what happened here okay the people spoken the tyrants at the top we'll start with the david cameron he quit he's quitting he's gonna quit that's what happens when the, now mind you he's still a criminal and all that but that's the thing and these boys these goon bags like that merkel same thing the people have to speak to make her quit uh, so that type of thing. I don't know who's going to be taking over, the, uh, uh, you know, as uh, prime minister there. But uh, he's already went and visited the Queen, so therefore, you know, it's a done deal. I guess Parliament will be uh, dissolved and uh, more elections. But now the seed has been planted throughout Europe and probably the world that, yes, you know, and I'm going to even just to kick a bomb in the nuts on this. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can get rid of the tyrannical governments when the people vote, when they have their say, when they speak. Now, is it going to be perfect? I don't know. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people that wanted to stay in the EU, and there is a lot of benefits of staying in the EU to a degree. But there's also, what, what people are weighing, the, weighing and measuring is uh, e economic prosperity to the Fortune 500 companies. Ooh, a whole bunch of glass on there. I broke a beer bottle there. Um, so, yeah, some Fortune 500 companies uh, getting really rich off the EU versus the populace uh, of the people who want to take back decision-making, not 90% of the decision-making in the country, but 100% of the decision-making in their country. So that's what that kind of says. So that means, yeah, screw the businesses, right? So, so. Uh, There's a busted bottle on the ground there. Just watch out for the... Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry, the little kids there. I didn't want them to step on the glass, eh? So... Uh, but, uh, oh, I just, I, I can't speak right now. I'll show you why. That is sweet. Oh, let's have another look at that. We'll get back to Brexit in a second. 
it's amazing. Uh, hopefully, you guys saw that car really well because it's, it's a GTO. I don't know, 66 maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> it's easy to fall in love in summertime when you see those kind of things running around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So the people have said, you know what? We don't care about trade deals if they're going to hurt the people. And they are. But the number one issue, I think, was the immigration. Now, the thing is, is that, and I couldn't believe I heard this on the CBC, which is a Canadian broadcasting system, uh, which are very leftist, very biased, and, you know, they're pro-United Nations, pro-anything on the left, EU, all that stuff. So I, I didn't catch uh, uh, Trudeau's, uh, everybody lining up for coffee here. <laughs> In Canada, this is like a ritual. Uh, so anyway, uh yeah, so I, everybody's out there trying to do damage control. So you had Jean-Claude Juncker out there. Wouldn't you just love to kick that guy in the nuts? Like, just for the shit, shits and giggles of it? <sighs> he's an asshole. But anyway, <laughs> he's out there, you know, you're, uh, okay, once you're out, that's it, you're out, and you've got to make this as quick as possible. But there's still a process here. Of course, there's always a process. And in this process, this is where they're going to try to make Britain suffer, and the UK. Now, I know it was a bit divided. I think Scotland and, and Ireland wanted to stay in. But that's their call. You know, technically they're their own country, so that's their call. Uh, oh, here comes the Chinook. That Chinook is always flying around every time I'm making a video. <laughs> Maybe it's fly following me. Now I was just coming out of the uh, Uplands base there and uh, just flying around, daily patrol. But anyway, uh, long story short, well, it's not always long story, is, you know, I, I, it's, it's really hard to know which way to go with this because there's so many things, points to, to be made. Uh, number one, I'm on the wrong street. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so now you got him saying, okay, well, you're in or you're out. And same with France, uh, Hollande and all there. But there's still like a two-year process before they can do anything. So everything is going to be the same as anything. So you have to understand, the fight's just, it's not even close to beginning. Uh, it, because you have to understand, the EU's still going to stand for another two years in, in the UK, it's, it's the, in Britain. It's still going to stand there. Because they have to renegotiate all the trade deals and stuff like that, which is good because then Britain gets to work out what's best for Britain, and everything goes along according as to plan uh, until that. Now, in that time, how are they going to make Britain suffer? Well, number one, mass flooding of migration is going to be a big thing. Yeah, you got your say, but remember, Greece uh, voted to get out too, uh, and what's happening with them? Difference is, is Britain's, you know, it's got industry. You know, even if everybody cuts them off and sanctions them tomorrow, they can still survive as a country. Uh, German flag there. Yeah, so th that type of thing. So th they, they've got something. Greece doesn't have anything, right? Uh, but the reset button has been hit. It doesn't matter. It's, it's done now. This dom these dominoes are now falling. So obviously, all the so-called, and this seems to be more what they're worried about uh, throughout Europe, is the populist movements now ditching all this globalism. And one commentator, he was actually, I, I can imagine they have restrictions on points they can make because he kind of got around the leftist CBC kind of saying, well, you know, people are seeing all these corporations getting richer and making all these decisions without consulting the people. So they're out of touch with the people. And he's, he's right. He's 100 percent right. Now, obviously, he tried to make this point, And of course, well, racist and bigots, the only reason why people wanted to get out of the, you know, just because people don't like immigration. No, people don't want mass untethered immigration. And Canada can learn something from this. Like, we don't need to be bringing in a quarter million people a year. It's not even just so much your, your size of, of uh, the land. It's, it also goes with the size of your economy, uh, your infrastructure, your health care. I mean, here in Canada, healthcare is just a complete nightmare. You know, like it's, it's sure it's semi-free, as they say. It's not free. There's no such thing as free. It's pay me now, pay me later. What a weird-looking tree. Look at that. Isn't that weird? I've never seen one of these before. So th that that's going on, and 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 people are just, you know, I think they want out no matter what because it's like okay, whatever bad things happen, it doesn't. It, it's only going to get worse going the other way. So. What are the bad things that are going to happen? Well, number one, economically, uh, I think uh, some some uh, some of the uh, you know big businesses are going to start laying off and moving things over to other countries, almost ASAP. Uh, Morgan Stanley, I think, is doing. That. Trust me, say good riddance to them. Okay, yeah, a lot of people are going to lose their job, and I hate to see people losing their job because most people don't really realize what globalism is about. They don't. They have no clue. That it's really not about the little guy. It's not about benefiting your country. It's about benefiting internationalists who 
basically do not have your country at best best in mind. Uh, think about what the wages would be in Britain right now, and in the same here in Canada, if you weren't bringing in almost slave labor. You know, uh, for example, here in Canada, Brit the uh, temporary foreign workers program, which got revamped, which will probably get revamped again. We almost have it right here in Canada. And in fact, a lot of people in Britain were saying, "We want the autonomy Canada has." Now, mind you, uh, and I'll do I'll do a separate video on because this is about Britain. I don't want I don't want to hijack it with my own country right now. But there's a lot we can learn from Brexit. And it's pretty much what I've been saying in short. Uh, referendums is the only way to trump the ty tyrannical governments. Uh, and then after that, you've, you've given them the warning you can give them. <laughs> you know what I mean? After that, people are going to revolt. And I think that uh, if they let this go on purpose, the reason being would be quite simple that, uh, again, like I was saying, if they would have stayed in with a country that divided, uh, almost guaranteed you would have a civil war within the next few years over uh, over this, uh, the migrant crisis is going to still have its 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 uh, take on it. But if they can get it curved or curbed in a short enough amount of time uh, to stop the mass immigration and stuff like that, Britain might be kind of semi-saved. It's going to hurt. But if you're not bringing in people who are going to undercut your labor, and here's the irony: is that even Donald Trump was talking about. He says exactly what they voted for is what we're calling for. That's why populism. Is, is, is on the rise everywhere, what they call, you know, Nazis everywhere. So they're saying the Nazis are rising everywhere. But they're not. Populist movements, nationalism, is love in one's country. And, and not only that, the sovereignty and the ability to have a say in your country over foreign bureaucrats. And this is the biggest problem we have in Canada as well, is almost every policy that comes in is a United Nations policy. And I would say Britain was more... You know, they have a United Nations problem as well, but... Uh, the EU is, you know, even more of a nightmare for them. And you have to understand, Canada was kind of signing on to the EU trade deals, uh, working out these gigantic trade deals and stuff like that, and the free trade. All this free trade stuff is globalistic, uh, doublespeak. It's not really free trade. It will cost you the sovereignty of your country. And that sovereignty of your country, again, the reason why this mass immigration, I think maybe what they were doing with the, the, the migrant crisis, because uh, remember, uh, the safest, closest country to Syria for these migrants, believe it or not, is Israel, right? And there's no way Israel's going to take in a single migrant. So, I mean, it's well defended, you know. Uh, resources are, you know, could be flooded into there, so there's no reason why that. Same with Saudi Arabia, same with Turkey and all that. Turkey's taken in some, but you see, if Turkey was just to be... I, I don't know what the status of Turkey is, whether they just got into the EU or not, but right now... Uh, the Ottoman Empire, so to speak, 2.0, which Erdogan is talking about, is not going to make it to Britain now. Uh, so, unless they try to squeeze it, squeeze everything in in the, the next two years. Remember, they have to completely destroy Britain in two years to make the Brexit work in their favor. Uh, meaning, you know, the Rothschild, Rockefeller, banking and cartels. Uh, because that's who's at the top of it all. I mean, you know, your George Soros's, your Henry Kissinger's and stuff like that. These people... Uh, you know, they, they are nuts. They are nuts. But the thing is, is that when the people speak, I mean, Cameron's stepping down. Now, is he stepping down or was he told, okay, you have to leave now. We have to completely let the other... I don't know how they're going to hijack it, but if they if they are, almost guaranteed. Let's say, um, I don't know, because I don't know British politics enough to say who, who the next prime minister is going to be. But we'll just say for argument's sake, it's Farage, Nigel Farage. I know some people like him, though. We're just going to pick him as an arbitrary person. Uh, if he gets it, okay, they have to make him look bad at every single step. They have to make the people suffer at every step in order for make, to make them beg to come back into the EU. So, obviously, they're going to hit people in the pocket. So, yes, there will be a recession. Okay, the pound, I think, took a hit, the lowest since 1985. But you have to understand, everything's going to have its cost. And I'm pretty sure if this was uh, exactly what the, you know, like a real democratic election... The 51 percent, or almost 52 percent, of people that voted to get out, they know this. You know, they're not going to, they're not going to regret this decision in five minutes. They, they, you know, they've had long and hard to think about it. Trust me, this is <coughs> one of those things that, yeah, okay, yeah, so you got your fanboy populists that will just go along with anything that's anti-establishment. Sure, great. But the people that, when you have, that, that, those are always the fringe elements. When you have that much of a majority. Uh, on any issue, any issue. It's hard to get 10% uh, voting on an issue, let alone, uh, you know, 50% of your population wanting that voted. Uh, I forget how many millions of people voted, but quite a bit. 
that's a big big turnout now the thing is is again what was the whole deal about with the the EU well a, it was supposed to just be a few trade deals to make trade easier but it became a bureaucratic nightmare controlling your immigration controlling your your environment controlling everything uh, completely basically stealing the sovereignty uh, of your country so in other words a communist takeover or communist like more socialist than communist but that's what these EU things are that's what the United Nations is uh, all that stuff all, all the I mean when I watch Parliament here in Canada every bill that comes from the Liberals or the NDP <coughs> is a United Nations bill almost every bill so that tells you about the sovereignty of your country if you can't throw these bums out but what is other things to think about okay yes there's going to be a lot of complications between businesses and stuff like that sure a lot of people are going to lose their jobs sure but a lot of new jobs will be created but more importantly sustainability now I think if the number one issue that got the Brexit to go was migration then the people really need to force it on to the to the leaders there I think in every country we need to close our borders there's just too many people that you know I know well it's a wealthy nation so you can handle it you can handle, no you can't I mean the wealth is the numbers are there the people are more poor now than what they were 30 years ago on average <laughs> you know what I mean we have finally moved into a generation that is not doing better than the previous uh, and like it, it kind of peaked with my generation and the, the Millennials where yeah the Millennials in a lot of ways are still doing better than the Gen Xers and the Gen Xers are doing better than the baby boomers but you know like the first wave second wave third wave uh, Gen X uh, baby bo or uh, Millennials well they, they got nothing not, half of them are living uh, in their parents basements <laughs> you know what I mean like you follow this channel you know what's going on I'm not a millennial I'm a Gen Xer but people are you know can't buy cars they can't buy houses they can't buy anything why wages are too low inflation is too high and it's, uh, there's just too much comp uh, competition for a service sector industry that they're phasing out with robots uh, and you can't even make that up you know what I mean you can't even make that up that's how bad it is so obviously the, they're already kicking the people in the nuts so when people say when enough's enough that's when you get these uprisings and I'm glad it went this way because this way yes there's going to be pain and trust me the media is going to try to make you doubt your decision every step of the way but you have to understand the first thing that every country needs to do is wrangle its immigration like here in Canada and I'm not tuning my own horn but uh, yeah it is the best country in the world sure yeah granted we got a lot of problems here we got we got a lot of problems here but we don't have the problems a lot of uh, European countries have with the mass immigration we at least got a process here probably the best immigration system in the world that said with the Trudeau government he's gonna screw it up but hopefully within four years we get a better government I was talking I was having dinner with a friend last night she was just Oh, yeah, I, I thought she was going to blow a gasket talking about Trudeau there. She's like, what a fucking... <laughs> yeah, she wants to kick him in the nuts big time. Uh, but uh, but that's the thing. Like, okay, so the biggest problem we had with our immigration system here is just a quarter million coming in every year. It's just too much. Which will mean demographic change. Now, when you mention demographic change, all you get from these globalists is, oh, well, it's because you're racist and bigot that you don't want your country to turn into uh, a Middle Eastern country. You know? I have nothing against the Middle Eastern people, but... I don't want my country to turn into uh, uh, a Middle Eastern country, you know? It, it, it's, it's a different country, you know? It's, it, it's got its own unique heritage, and that needs to be preserved. And that's the same with Britain. Britain needs to be full of white, pasty, white, uh, red-headed red -headed people, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, those fair-skinned people, those Brits. You know, they, they, need, they need to be that. They don't need to be Pakistani. They don't need to be all that. And nothing against people that are there that are of that, that uh, descendants. But the thing is, is when... All, all the major capitals, or the major capital in your country is almost majority mi of minorities, which are no longer going to be minorities. Uh, you know, like, I mean, you're, you're getting a demographic change. You change the, the demographics, you change the culture. You change the culture, you change the country. And we're not changing countries into better. We're regressing them back into third world countries, which is a United Nations plan to make everybody equally poor so that they could say there's equality. I know it sounds... Uh, over simplistic but it is you could follow the wages again why would you be flooding people in like I, great britain is a big enough country like square foot wise you know what i mean like coastline wise it's no canada like you know for for space but infrastructure stuff like that you got people piled on top of each other i mean they have uh, more than double our population <laughs> and where are you going to put them all you know where are you going to put them all and they still want to bring in un like un 
unbelievable amounts when you don't need it. There, there's just, you know, and then, and then of course you've got your UN crowd and the EU crowds talking about sustainable development and being uh, uh, eco-friendly and all that, but yet want to flood as many people into one area as possible. You know what I mean? Like it, it just it doesn't work. So you can have low birth rates in any country. You can have low, low, and that's sustainable because it opens up more opportunities with less competition for people to uh, be able to get better jobs. Uh, the healthcare system isn't as strained. I mean, why are we bringing in people here, like here in Canada? Why are we bringing in like people over the age of 50? You know what I mean? That have all kinds of health problems from the third world. You know, we can't even help the people we got here. And that's what that's what's going on over there in Britain. It's like, well, we can't even help the people we got. You know, like, and you want to bring in more. So, the competition for jobs, low-paying jobs that are being phased out by robots. And I mean, again, I'm seeing them. I go to them to the grocery stores, automated cashiers. Uh, yeah, so now you can't even get a minimum wage job. What are you going to do with all the people? So the globalists, again, have no interest uh, in the people. They're, 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 they're completely out of touch with reality. Uh, and that's what people are picking up on. So the other thing is is that people are not giving a shit anymore of being called racist and bigot, which is good. But that's going to be bad for all these globalists. Uh, yes, they still need to be accountable. People die on the plans of the EU, the mass migration. Uh, encouraging all the human trafficking. Remember, it was EU uh, members, like literally, or uh, you know, EU organized buying refugee rafts, paying for these freighters to go back and forth to grab the refugees, or really economic migrants and stuff like that. So people see this and they're like, they're sitting there on, uh, talking out the side of their face, talking about how they need to crack down on uh, human uh, human smuggling. Meanwhile, the, the blue star keeps going back to Libya for uh, for more people. You know, 5,000, 20,000 at a time, whatever it is. So, people start to ask, well, why are they flooding in so many people if they can't even take care of them? Well, it's simple. For these internationals, the idea is to wreck sovereignty. That's why there's so much of a move to say that anybody that wants to support their country and wants to uh, keep sovereignty in their country and decision-making in their country, not form bureaucrats, is a Nazi and a racist and a bigot. That's the only thing. So, it's a fear tactic that's not work anymore. Why? Because people now have skin in the game. They got a dog in the fight. You know what I mean? Uh, you now have to compete with 15 migrants that just came in. You know, <laughs> that type of thing. There you go. Got an Ireland and a, uh, an Irish flag and a, and a uh, what's call it? The, I think George flag there. There you go. But you get the idea. Like, the people have said enough is enough. Now, other good things out of this is that it shows how, uh, like, Cameron stepping down, uh, some of the financial systems leaving uh, the, uh, Britain. This is going to be benefits. It sounds like it's, it's going to hurt in the, the short term, simply due to the fact that uh, you know they're going to make you suffer. Plus, there's just you hit the reset button, so that means people are going to lose their jobs just out of regulation. Oh well, we can no longer do trade here because we you know, we got to renegotiate it. Whatever. So it's not going to be a smooth transition as they want. I mean. And, and the proof is in the pudding. Because the EU is so screwed up and, you know, works so horribly anyway. Uh, sure. It, 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 you know, people are going to... They're going to suffer a lot for, you know, a good time to come. Now, the thing is, is... The bailouts going from Britain to places like Green Spain, uh, Greece, Spain, all those places, Italy, uh, so, soon to have been Turkey, <laughs> you know, all that stuff is going to stay, all that money is now going to stay in Britain if they choose to. Meaning, they're not going to have to inflate their currency and the pound is going to go up. It's actually probably going to go up like a rocket. This is a problem uh, some other countries have had, like uh, Switzerland had a few times where the currency went too high and then it kind of kills off their exports. But that's okay because you need, now need to think not globally of trade deals, but internally of sustainability, which is so much better. And, and here in Canada, that's what we need uh, is... Never mind racing our... Like Canada, and I'm not tooting our own horn, but with the resources we got, the things that keep our dollar lower than the United States is you have to understand it's artificially low. It's artificially held back by bad trade deals like NAFTA, etc., etc. I'm not saying nothing good ever came out of NAFTA, but China wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for NAFTA. You know, and that wasn't even supposed to benefit them. But it did. You know, allowing corporations, particularly crown corporations to send all their jobs overseas, so I'll use Bombardier here 
in Canada as an example, sending all that those jobs to Mexico on Canadian taxpayers' dollars, that burns your arse. You know, that burns your arse. Uh, so it's the same with Britain. So if they now have the autonomy, they can now turn their economy inwards. Meaning, rather than worrying about the next big trade deal with another country where you have to give up so much sovereignty in order to uh, to, to function, you have to race your currency down to the bottom to compete with, you know, with the you know the cheapest stuff from the lowest bidder and racing your currency to the bottom. Well, you'll get there, and that's what we've done globally. So here in Canada, uh, same thing with Britain. All they need to do, and not easier said than done, of course, number one, focus on small business owners and stuff like that. You could still do trade. Okay, so you lose out on your exports. But if you have a strong currency, your imports are going to be excellent. And, and that's going to be good. That's going to be good. Now, again, depending on how your uh, population is, like, again, Britain doesn't have the resources Canada has, but it still has some stuff. But this is where population management, uh, by not having redate, like, there's not a reason to have anybody coming into England uh, or Britain. Uh, like, they, they don't need migration. They don't need anybody. They're full. Uh, that's it's the same here in Canada. We're full. Yes, we've got land mass, but again, you're piling people on top of each other with not enough resources to feed them, to clothe them, to educate them, uh, jobs, etc., etc. It's, it's just not manageable. And when they make that argument of, oh, well, we have to, because uh, it's, it's the same argument they make everywhere. Uh, well, we have to um, uh, bring in all this mass immigration because uh, the retirees, we can't afford the retirees. We need the next generation to pay for them. Well, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. If it, First off, go look at what it costs for your retirees. We're 36 million people in this country, okay? And I can't remember what... We've got a good chunk of our population is is in retirement or ready to retire, okay? Now, if we were to cut out uh, every year, okay, get out of the United Nations, there's $400 million minimum uh, for the union fees for that. Uh, Stop paying the Queen, sorry, but uh, yeah, take away her $400 million welfare check. Uh, NATO, get out of NATO, another $400 million, uh, plus all the billions of dollars that go into all those other deals. Uh, whatever the billions of dollars we give to Israel, cut all that. Trust me, we can fund our retirement. <laughs> you know what I mean? And the $23 billion a year we waste on our, uh, for example, our uh, immigration system. We, you know, Again, you cut off the immigration. And, you know, have a tap on, tap off. If you need people, bring them in. Have a very high standard. We were going very high standards. That's why immigrants here are much better integrated than a lot of the ones overseas is because here we did have a uh, point system which worked fairly well and I, I actually thought it was quite fair and yeah that came in under the Harper government but the thing is is that and a lot of people can realize is that just the numbers are too high but now we got Trudeau who wants to lower the standards to do basically what they're doing in uh, all these European countries just let them in who cares where they come from who cares what their skills are most of these people coming in will never work they're just coming in for welfare so if you cut that off, now you can fund your retirement. Now you can fund your paved roads. So yeah, so they're going to have to repatriate a few place uh, people. I don't think they should like kick people out of the country, but all these illegals coming in, just kick them out. Them yes, because you know they, they don't have a claim on your country just because. Well, the United Nations, their 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 uh, mentality is quite simple. You know, uh, no more borders, no more countries, and the free movement and travel of people. Who cares where they go from? Uh, come from? And that's great for these people who sit in their ivory towers, right? And white picket fences, always holding refugee welcome signs and all that stuff. Okay, great for them. That's great, you know, that's great for them. Because they never have to deal with these people, right? They don't have to compete with these people. They've already got a uh, government-paid job, (laughs) you know? So in other words, the people that, uh, you know, are basically paying for their own destruction. And that's all government seems to be doing is trying to destroy the sovereignty of every country. Canada included, Britain included. And I think that's what the Brexit is really about, is people just... You know, they they, they 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 want to prosper. Everybody wants to prosper. You know, and then that that's kind of you know that, that's just kind of normal. Like uh, that, you know, you, you want to have you want the next generation to be do better than the previous and stuff like that. You want to be able to move things forward without having to be in, in such a crunch all the time. You want to be able to live more than paycheck to paycheck. You want to be able to live without just living to work. And you don't want to have to put a lot of work into finding somewhere to freaking be employed. You don't. Even, and not only that, you you want you want you want opportunity. So basically, that's what I think the Brexit is really about: is the opportunity to have the decision to kind of scale back on all this globalism, uh, which that's going to have its again. There's going to be drawbacks. You know, there's 
Anybody think that's going to be walking the park? No. But I think what it's going to do is it will lead to a... Re uh, and this is what Cameron was probably referring to, uh, that it could lead to war, it could lead to... Uh, uh, lead to uh, uh, a massive recession in, uh, you know, over the over the Brexit issue. Well, he's right. Why? Because the amount of people are just going to lose their jobs out of spite from these corporations to make people suffer. But they're already doing that anyway. And the good news is, yes, people are going to lose jobs in the masses. But these corporations are going to basically, they're going to, they, without bailouts, they can't survive. They're parasites, right? Uh, they're the biggest welfare recipients out there is these Fortune 500 corporations. So now when you no longer have to bail these people out, what are they going to do? They're going to get desperate. They're obviously, they're going to try to take you to war. Uh, a lot of people don't see the connections, but if you follow these uh, ass clowns around enough, you, you really pick up what they're about. You know, they're, they are psychopaths. If they don't get their way, they make people suffer. But the thing is, is who's next on the list? I bet you we're going to see a succession of, uh, well, now they're talking about the, the Frankzit for, for France, which is basically Marine Le Pen. She, she'd be on there wouldn't even have to be a referendum on it, you know what I mean? She'd be like, oh, yeah, done. That's part of the, part of the uh, process. And you look how hard the EU, I mean, uh, for example, the freedom of speech thing, <coughs> EU law that just came out, uh, banning freedom of speech, they did this in a 24-hour span. So people in Great Britain, okay, have to follow, okay, uh, these hate speech laws, which are basically designed to anybody to criticize anything. They don't really care about somebody criticizing a little... Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, like bullying something. They don't care about it. What they care about is people, dissent against the government. That's what they care about. And because of that, people have just lost their freedom of speech to a centralized power. Where does it end? You know what I mean? Like, where does it end where you could say, okay, you know what? Uh, I might not like what you have to say, but who has the right to take my freedom of speech from a chair over there, somebody I never elected, over there in the EU, in Brussels, sitting there telling somebody in downtown London <laughs> uh, that they don't have a right to voice an opinion and there could be fines and they can go to jail and they can, all kinds of stupid stuff like that. And that's why people are rejecting things like the United Nations and stuff like that and, and they're rejecting. Because you have to understand, we also live in the globalized age in the sense of communication. And people can now understand how things are meaningful. Like people, everybody, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that doesn't really know that this is all orchestrated, that they don't know who's doing it. And yes, there's also your useful idiots. Uh, I'm not saying every politician is bad, but you could pretty much figure it out that the, you know, the politicians that are just like utopianistically stupid that, oh yes, we love mass immigration oh, we want help, these people are in power because they're stupid, uh, they're easy to control you just have to tell them it's for a PC cause and they'll do it, right, they're, they're that dumb uh, so th those are useful idiots so then, yeah, okay, they sure, they're still accountable for their actions of, of destroying a country uh, with mass immigration, loss of sovereignty and trade, bad trade deals that always end up people getting fired, I mean, it's the reason why we have hardly any manufacturing left in Canada in comparison to what we used to have now, because we gave all our jobs to China. Why? Because of globalism. Uh, insourcing and outsourcing. You know, uh, nationalism and protectionism. Every time I hear, oh, well, that's bad, that's bad, that's just, oh, that's bad. That's not bad, that's good. If you want to have prosperity in your country. If you want to give prosperity to all these other countries, sure, insourcing and outsourcing. And so the only arguments they have is either you're racist and bigot or a Nazi. If you have any saying, hey, you know what? I, I really don't want to have to lose... Uh, you know, my, my voting right. I, I really don't want to have to lose my say in how my country uh, does trade deals or whatever. So, it's very, very, very simple that when people, you know, when they lose everything, they lose it, right? And that's what you could say about the British people. Yes, there are still... Uh, I think one uh, the British girl said it well. She goes, people either have a, a crappy uh, workers, uh, like a working class job, you know, where they're laboring in the sun, or they have a talking job, you know, kind of like what I'm doing. You know, and, and the guy, she goes, the guys that have the talking jobs, or girls, they, they do okay. Because that's, you know, it's it's an overinflated in industry, right? But it's it's an industry that's like anything. Like for me, I, I'm technically free enterprise in the sense that I only make money off the people that actually support me and want. You know what I mean? Whereas if you take a lot of these government, uh, like the CBC here in Canada, or the, the BBC, that's paid for by the taxpayers whether they want it or not. So people have lost that sovereignty. Now, when your uh, broadcasting system is supposed to be fair and non-biased, all of a sudden turns very pro-EU, pro-mass immigration, anti-any sort of nationalism whatsoever. Uh, 
Yeah, you're going to dupe some of the people because, again, some people are very dumbed down in that sense that it's easy to, uh, to, uh, to I'll just go ahead, uh, easy to dumb down some people and, and just get them to go along with anything. But other people are like, no, 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 no. Why, has, why hasn't the so-called non-biased media questioned this idea or this idea or this policy or that policy? And we see none of that. All we see is fear, fear, fear. If, if you uh, want to have an independent say, well, oh no, we can't leave, you know, you, you guys can't have that kind of decision-making power because either, either you're going to be racist or bigot and you're going to choose wrong no matter which way you choose. But that's the, that's the whole point of what democracy was supposed to be was people choose good, bad, or ugly. That's why I like Switzerland in the way they do their uh, referendums. And I think that's about the only way to kind of keep a government in check is to basically regulate them away via referendum, meaning if you can, I mean, think about the victory here. They got rid of Cameron and the EU in one vote, plus some bad banking cartels such as, uh, I think, Morgan Stanley or whatever. If that's what independence means, how could that be bad? You know, sure, it's going to have a, you're going to, I mean, you have to understand, we hit the reset button now. Britain's done this for the world, whether they want, realize it or not. So yes, everywhere in the world is going to have uprisings, everywhere in the world is going to have these kind of referendums in the next couple of years. There's, there's no doubt about that. Why? Because people are just going to want out of all this, this, this batch of craziness. So the button's been pushed. The reset button has been pushed. Economic, who knows how, be prepared for anything, put food away. Uh, there's just so much more I can say on this, but what's done is now done. And uh, the only thing I could really say is, like, it, the, the, the effects are felt around the world right now, economically. Why? Because, like I said, it's all one system. Now a piece of it just fell off, a big piece of it. And that, again, is a huge domino. And I think it's going to have a cascading effect. I, I could see nationalism uh, right now. I could see nationalism spiking to a, like a, a historic all-time high. It already is at a historic all-time high, probably since the 1400s, where people are starting to care about the countries again. And the thing is, is that I think it's going to be very simple when it comes down to it that it's just going to be domino falling after domino. I can see Greece in, in, in the near future taking a second stab at it, saying, you know what, we're just going to let it go. They're going to default, and then that'll lead to Germany having to take up that hit. Right? So again, the German people are going to have to take that hit. Uh, Spain will go. Uh, Ireland will go. Uh, all, all these countries are going to hit, because we're in global, global stagnation. So all that's been happening is taking money from the wealthier countries and giving it to all these countries a, that are fiscally irresponsible, which all the countries are. Mine too. We were close. Uh, we had a, a balanced budget for about 15 minutes until Trudeau came along. <coughs> so, in that sense, yeah, we're going to take a hit here in Canada too. We're just behind the times of everybody. We're about 8 to 10 years behind all the bullshit that you're seeing in Europe. Uh, with Trudeau, uh, the thing is it might get us there a little bit quicker. But if Trudeau lasts a full four years... I think once the time started, like, I mean, economic times are already starting to turn bad here in Canada big time. Uh, more out west than the rest, but the thing is, is once the welfare starts drying up, that's when people are start, going to start to revolt. And that's what you're seeing around the world. So, the thing is, is the countries that can handle on, if they don't have to pay all the, bail out all these countries that are basically, uh, you know, non-functional anyway, uh, they got that money for themselves. They could take care of their own. Well, that's, that's gonna, people are going to see that as a shining beacon of hope. And, you know, good on the Brits for being the example. Uh, they're going to be criticized for the first little bit, but once things start smoothing out and people having the say of their, their uh, sovereignty of their country, making their own trade deals that work best for them, well, it's going to work for the people in that country, which is going to lower tensions in that country big time when they're doing well. And, of course, what will happen is other countries will just probably go along and... Uh, blame them for, you know, well, because uh, Britain left, uh, that's why our country's falling. But then again, self-reflection is going to be needed. Well, you know what? We need a basically a debt jubilee everywhere in the country. But more important, important, importantly, we need an Iceland solution everywhere to put all these bankers in jail that got us into this stuff in the first place. We basically hooked people on debt. And you got to think about what happened in 2008. I'm just going to stand in the shade just to finish up this video. But you got to think what happened in 2008. Basically, the bankers called into debt, which they basically forced a collapse. Uh, it, that's the, I know that's an oversimplification of it, but that's what happened. Now, what happens is, is now, if people are smart, they can just tell the bankers, no, you keep the debt, and no, we're not going to bail you out. And right now, that's why they have bail-in and bail-out uh, 
uh, you know, basically uh, clauses everywhere, including here in every country, you know, is to bail out the bankers. But people need to, again, this is where the Iceland solution has to come in and where we throw our corrupt politicians and bankers who orchestrated this stuff in the first place. And you start with your Rothschilds, Rockefellers, work your way down, your J.P. Morgans, uh, all that stuff, you know, the people in there, like Jamie Dimon, all that. And all these unionists uh, that uh, basically set up set up people to fail on purpose. So you bail the people out, not, not the governments. And I think that can only happen via referendum. So I know this is just the beginning of hitting the reset button. We're, we're, we're going to see things that are going to be spectacular by the end of 2016. Um, yeah, it's already pretty... I mean, you got pretty much uh, the French Revolution 3.0 going on there in France through all the unionists and stuff like that. Uh, you know, sitting there, you know, they, they don't like these new labor reforms and stuff like that coming in. But that's going to happen everywhere. Now, uh, France is going to be needing a bailout very, very soon. Britain's not going to be there for that one, so to speak. Or that'll be the last kind of uh, thing that they're going to do. Say, well, okay, well, before Britain is completely out, it's going to take two years to negotiate these trade deals. Uh, I think it's going to happen a lot faster because I think there's just going to be defaulting everywhere. So, and that would be the best for any country. Just, we're just going to default on our debt. Yes, people are going to die no matter which way you go on this, whether through starvation, lack of resources, or whatever. But people could reset their currencies. Uh, like if Greece could reset its currency, it could devalue it enough so that it could get its economy going again. Maybe not perfectly, but it's going to have to go fiscally responsible. The best country in the world for this is really Canada because we're still close. Even with the, the damage Trudeau's done in the last past couple of months of being in power, uh, we're still not so far into debt that we can't crawl out, but we're going to take a hit soon. Uh, Ontario, Quebec, B.C., uh, all, all the uh, Newfoundland, all, these are all have-not provinces, and now basically the only have province I think left is Saskatchewan, which is starting to hurt. So pretty soon, the have-not pro the have provinces are going to be have-not provinces. So our only fix is get out of OPEC, for example, and use our own resources to uh, take care of uh, Canada, like the oil stuff like that. You know, that that's what we got to do. I mean, why are we selling Canadian oil on U.S. currency? You know, on the petrodollar. Why, why are we even bothering with that? Nothing against my American brothers and sisters down there, but our, th that's what I mean. Like, our dollar is artificially low because we're pegged to somebody else's currency when we don't need to be. And th the thing about, uh, for Britain, well, it's the same thing. They, they don't need to be pegged to anybody else's currency, uh, you know, for OPEC and stuff like that. They, they, they can buy in whatever currency they want. They should be able to. And that's where these globalists are really failing is that, again, centralized power never works, uh, be, you know, to a degree. Simple, uh, simpler is better. Uh, you can go with uh, what they call Parkinson's Law. If you've ever heard about Parkinson's Law, you'll understand why the EU won't work. <laughs> it can't work. Now, about the free travel and stuff like that from border to border, people who work, you know, and then, uh, you know, 10 feet over there in another country. Yeah, those little things are going to be very difficult. You're going to need papers. You're going to need to be whatever. But every country could set its own uh, kind of Schengen zone kind of uh, policies if they want. Say, okay, well, no, well, we'll keep this and we'll have a mutual, you can travel from this country to this country. Uh, because you're bordering us. But if you're not bordering us, okay, then you're going to need a passport. You know, that, that type of thing. Whatever deal. But let the country choose. Let the people choose. And this idea that, okay, well, the populists uh, need to be replaced in every country by third worlders, well, that, that's, I think that's going out the window. Again, it'll be a little while before we see it here in Canada, but if we ever do get an, a real nationalist government uh, that want to put Canadians first here in Canada, man, we could be a, we could be a beacon of hope for the world. And, and the trade would be smoother. Uh, Definitely get rid of all this uh, stupid uh, stock market stuff that's all, you know, trading nothing. You know, like all that stuff needs to go. It, it just needs to go because that's what's keeping people, holding people back. But the other thing is, is we have to allow the too big to fails to fail. And if there's an indication that too big to fail just failed, well, that's the Brexit. It's just shown that the EU is, it's too big uh, and it failed. It's just, it's, it, it's too, they call it too big to fail. I say too complicated to work. Uh, I guess I'm babbling on now. I'm going to have to wrap this up. But, yeah, which, whichever way it goes, we'll have to see. I know not everybody is going to be happy about this deal, but it is a step in the right direction. Sovereignty of your country is always a step in the right direction. Not an easy one. Uh, and not all countries are going to be on the same playing field. I get that. So you have to make your country work for itself. Uh, and the best way to do that is to turn your economy inwards, not outwards. Yes, trade is good, that, but that should just be icing on the cake. That should never be... Uh, when China has a bad day, that shouldn't affect your currency. You know what I mean? Uh, that type of thing. Uh, and that's what, that's what we're at now, where it's a mountain climber effect. One falls, we all fall. Well, the Brexit is the beginning of the mountain climber fall. So who's next? I don't know. Maybe it'll be France. Maybe France will get out. And, uh, I mean, again, some countries are never going to be able to restore themselves because they're just dysfunctional government-wise. 
and stuff like that, and they're fiscally too irresponsible. But the countries that are fiscally responsible don't owe these other countries uh, a bailout. They don't. If they want to help, sure. I mean, we have Trudeau talking about bailing out uh, European countries. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, like we can't even take care of everybody here, and you're, you're worried about over there. You know, uh, that's the problem with all these uh, globalists. Is all they care about is being running the United Nations. They don't care about their own countries. They say they do, but they don't. And I mean, if you look at all the lies that uh, Trudeau here in Canada has put out just to get elected, and how many things he's had to renege on already, <laughs> you know, it's, it's pretty self-evident. But what I like is that, again, when the people spoke over there in Britain, they, they got, they, you know, if you did a referendum on everything, yeah, it's, it's a pain in the ass in the beginning because you're always doing referendums. And I was talking about this uh, in a few previous videos. Uh, maybe they're not out yet to, from the making of this video, but um, one thing that was a big deal is, is that what you'll be looking at, okay, is you, you, you okay, you, they have the Brexit. You get rid of Cameron and probably a whole bunch of his guys as well, because they, they just threw in the towel, like, okay, well, we can't win, you know, whatever. So you've gotten rid of more than you, you bargained for. You got rid of uh, the EU. It's not going to go overnight, but you get the idea. At least it's on that trajectory. Now it's just, what are they going to do to punish you in the next two years? Without, but the thing is, is it's a catch-22 of the mountain climber effect. They can't pull out your mountain climbing peg without them falling too, because you're going to take them down with them, right? So it's, it's a... You know, it, it's it's kind of a, it's it's very spiteful when you think about it. Nobody, it, it's kind of like the the Brexit has to go as smoothly as possible for all parties involved for the least amount. Of, there's nothing the EU can do to Britain now that won't hurt them even more in the long run. But however, the EU is going to hurt more than Britain in the long run. So that that's the thing. So who wants to stay in the EU? Nobody. And again, you think about it, uh, like Greece and Spain, for example, they were added into the EU when. You know, nobody wanted them. And they, they were talking about bringing in Turkey. Again, again, the, the, the people of Britain have no say of who's going to join. Why would you want to join on to something like that? But more, more importantly, it's how hard it is to get out of these things. So I think if you started there, the next, the next logical step is get out of the United Nations and NATO. Again, Britain doesn't need NATO at all. Like, I mean, if there's a world war, trust me, you can pick your allies. This idea of uh, propping up somebody else's military at the expense of your own is stupid. Uh, even, even Donald Trump knows this. And again, Donald Trump out there saying, basically what Britain is calling for is what I'm calling for. You know, autonomy of the country. So that's why you're seeing this, this movement to the right. But with every media system on the planet biased to the left and in favor, because basically, the, like I've said before, and I'll just wrap up on this, the Rothschild-Rockefeller dynasty is basically the media system is the education system. The education system is the economy. The economy, okay, is the petrodollar. The petrodollar and the central bankers uh, in one world government, EU, all that stuff, everything in the United Nations, that, that is all one system. It's all controlled by the same people. The EU is a part of this system. They just give a couple of different brands to make you look like you have options and choice, but you really don't. So, again, I'm sure they're going to make the Brits suffer for this, but I think they're going to be better for it in the next generation. In other words, the pay me now, pay me later scenario, at some point, somebody's got to take the hit. You won't really want to be to the next generation. I don't want my nephew to have to inherit the debt that this government is racking up. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather take the hit now than him. And his kids, and etc. So it's about the future. We, we, we've we messed up by letting it go this long. we got to take the hit. That's the bigger thing. Yes, we're going to do it here in Canada. It's just we're a little further out. Uh, but, yeah. So, good luck to the Brits. Uh, I think you guys chose wisely, and I think you guys chose the right thing. I, the, the way they're making it sound is people just did this as a populism whim that, without any thought. No, there was a lot of thought in this. And if you look, watch, you know, British people are, tend to be quite clever anyway to figure this stuff out, you know. So they know who is screwing them. And I'm glad that they stuck up to the bully EU. The EU has been nothing but a parasite, more harm than good. The whole financial system, the EU, the United Nations, it's all one system. The media system, it's all one system. Because it's all owned by the same cartels, right? And because of that, people are rejecting that system. That's why... Communism, no matter what form it takes, whether it's globalism, communism, or socialism, communism, it always fails. And it's always based in those roots of communism. Uh, cultural Marxism and political correctness, failing. Why? It's all the same stuff over and over again. And they keep trying. So you've got to stay alive on the fence there and make sure you, you know what's going on. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up about that. We'll have to uh, watch and see what happens. I think it's going to be very interesting from here to now to the end of the year we're going to see some pretty spectacular things so okay i was wrong on i really didn't think they were going to let them go um but i called the numbers right pretty much 51 49 type of thing it was like 51 
point nine to forty eight point one. How close was that, right? And uh, so I called that right. I just called it in the wrong direction. But this is good news. It's going to be rougher, but trust me, it would be worse if they stayed in. Uh, now, who's the next country? I don't know. I'll have to think on that one. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation to the channel. i got to go into LeBaron there now, check out some stuff. Um, if you'd like to make a donation to the channel, there's links down below. Thank you so much everybody has. If you want to make, a couple, uh, uh, make some money for yourself, you can check out my TSU link. It's down below also as well. It's a lot of fun. I'm over 18 bucks now. Well, I don't know about now because I haven't checked it in about a week <laughs> since I've been down in town. And, uh, yeah, so it's down there, and it's a lot of fun. Gets your mind off all the serious stuff. And next to that, rate, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourselves. Be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. And have yourselves a great day. Hey, eh? hi, and welcome. Sorry. Let me put this in my best British accent. Good day, hi, and welcome. I hope you're having a great day with some tea and crumpets. No spam. I, I know British people don't really talk like that. Oh, hey, chappy. Today we have Brexit. And it is a glorious Brexit day for after breakfast. I, I don't know, anyway, yeah, so now that I've lost every British subscriber I have. Uh, <laughs> okay, Brexit, yeah. So, okay, I'll be first to say, I was wrong. I, I mean, I was like, well, scarily on some details I was dead on, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I was wrong. They got to stay. So now I'm not going to say this is a winning victory for democracy in the sense of, yes, you actually do get a vote. Because you don't know. They could be just letting it go. Yes, there's going to be hard times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I want you to think about it this way. The reset button has just been pressed globally. Yes, globally. This is going to have... It, uh, next to waking up to all the markets crashing, and uh, it's been a hell of a week for me. I've been in town all week. I'm going to be in town till Sunday. Today's the 24th the day after the Brexit. Uh, so market's crashing, that, that's short term. Like that's gonna bounce back. So that's nothing. But yes, there will be a recession, I guarantee that. But w what we're gonna talk about here is when the people have spoken, okay? That's democracy, 50% plus one, uh, you know, uh, and you got, look how close I called it though, just in the reverse, uh, 51, 48, uh, it was like 48.1, in favor of staying in 51.9 in favor almost 52 percent but I, I said 48 51 but i thought it was going to be the other way around that they would be staying just to give people a kick in the nuts uh but it didn't work out that way um now is this a good thing or a bad thing well it's going to be painful no matter which way you go it's going to be more painful for other countries and believe it or not brexit almost guarantees war in germany not between britain and in the in the, the uk but between germans and the rest of the EU. Why? Because uh, now the big player, I mean, this is a hell of a domino falling here. A lot of people like the global implications. We're not going to see it for months yet, maybe even years, but it is a step in the right direction, but it's going to be a very painful step no matter which way you go. Like I said, we're in an insolvent situation globally everywhere from, even on the CBC, they were almost speaking in half truths. They're like, well, it's a populist movement. It's not just because people are... Uh, you know, racist and bigot or whatever. No, they actually want sovereignty back to their country. So Brexit made sense. And they're saying that, and I couldn't believe it actually hearing this on the news where the CBC is saying, well, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the politicians are, and, and the central planners are completely out of touch with what the people want. And it's true, they are. So with that, it, it's, it's you know, again, if this is truly the people speaking, you never know, it could be hijacking this thing for other reasons. But obviously there's going to be a ton of layoffs but if you look at what happened here, okay, the people spoken, the tyrants at the top, we'll start with uh, David Cameron, he quit, he's quitting, he's going to quit. That's what happens when, the, now mind you, he's still a criminal and all that, but that's the thing, uh, these bullies, these goon bags like that, Merkel, same thing, the people have to speak to make her quit. Uh, so that type of thing, I don't know who's going to be taking over, the, uh, uh, you know, as uh, prime minister there. But uh, he's already went and visited the Queen, so therefore, you know, it's a done deal. I guess Parliament will be uh, dissolved and uh, more elections. But now the seed has been planted throughout Europe and probably the world that, yes, you know, and I'm going to even, just to kick Obama in the nuts on this, yes, we can. Yeah, we can get rid of the tyrannical governments when the people vote, when they have their say, when they speak. Now, is it going to be perfect? I don't know. Um... I mean, there's a lot of people that wanted to stay in the EU, and there is a lot of benefits of staying in the EU to a degree. But there's also, what, what people are weighing, the, weighing and measuring is uh, e economic prosperity to the Fortune 500 companies. Ooh, a whole bunch of glass on there. I broke a beer bottle there. Uh, 
so yeah, some Fortune 500 companies uh, getting really rich off the EU versus the populace uh, of the people who want to take back decision making. Not 90% of the decision making in the country, but 100% of the decision making in their country. So that's what that kind of says. So that means, yeah, screw the businesses, right? So, so. Uh, there's a busted bottle on the ground there. Just watch yeah. out for the. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, sorry, the little kids there. I didn't want them to step on the glass. Eh? So, uh, but uh, oh, I just I, I can't speak right now. I'll show you why. That is sweet. Oh. Have another look at that. We'll get back to Brexit in a second. It's amazing. Uh, hopefully, you guys saw that car really well because it's, it's a GTO. I don't know, 66 maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> it's easy to fall in love in summertime when you see those kind of things running around. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. So the people have said, you know what? We don't care about trade deals if they're going to hurt the people. And they are. But uh, the number one issue, I think, was the immigration. Now, the thing is, is that, and I couldn't believe I heard this on the CBC, which is the Canadian Broadcasting System, uh, which are very leftist, very biased, and, you know, they're pro-United Nations, pro-anything on the left, EU, all that stuff. So I, I didn't catch uh, uh, Trudeau's, uh, everybody's lining up for coffee here. <laughs> In Canada, this is like a ritual. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I, everybody's out there trying to do damage control. So you had Jean-Claude Juncker out there. Wouldn't you just love to kick that guy in the nuts? Like, just for the shit, shits and giggles of it? <sighs> he's an asshole. But anyway, <laughs> he's out there, you know, you're, uh, okay, once you're out, that's it, you're out, and got to make this as quick as possible. But there's still a process here. Of course, there's always a process. And in this process, this is where they're going to try to make Britain suffer, and the UK. Now, I know it was a bit divided. I think Scotland and, and Ireland wanted to stay in. But that's their call. You know, technically, they're their own country, so that's their call. Uh, oh, here comes the Chinook. That Chinook is always flying around every time I'm making a video. <laughs> Maybe it's flying, following me. No, it's just coming out of the uh, Uplands base there and uh, just flying around daily patrol. But anyway, uh, long story short, well, it's not always long story, is, you know, I, I, it's, it's really hard to know which way to go with this because there's so many things, points to, to be made. Uh, number one, I'm on the wrong street. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so now you've got him saying, okay, well, you're in or you're out. And same with France, uh, Hollande and all there. But there's still like a two-year process before they can do anything. So everything is going to be the same as anything. So you have to understand, the fight's just, it's not even close to beginning. Uh, it, because you have to understand, the EU's still going to stand for another two years in, in the UK, it's, it's the, in Britain. It's still going to stand there. Because they have to renegotiate all the trade deals and stuff like that, which is good because then Britain gets to work out what's best for Britain, and everything goes along according as to plan uh, until that. Now, in that 